Good morning and a warm welcome to World Baptist Church on this, the second Sunday of April 2021. Here are just a few of us from World and friends at our partner church in Albania to welcome you with a smile and a cheery wave. You join us this Sunday on YouTube while we continue to judge when we can safely open the building fully. New flooring has been laid this weekend and I'm looking forward to seeing it. Once again, let us joyfully praise the name of the Lord our God, offer our prayers and listen out for his word. My name is Alan Bayliss, World Baptist, the church I serve as minister. Now you'll find out more about World Baptist Church on our website. Do check it out and if you'd like to get in touch, catch up on a previous service or sermon, then that's the place to go. I have a few things to flag up this week. Alpha Online starts again this Wednesday. If you or anyone you know or have invited have yet to register, please get in touch with me ASAP as soon as possible. And on Thursday this week, it's the CAP Money course, another online course. And the go-to people there to find out more details and register uh, are Liz Painter or Sarah Bowles. And this Friday at 8 p.m., it's a time of fellowship and prayer with our friends in Drita Ebotis, Albania. Details from Steve Pearson if you'd like to join in, uh, and that's on Zoom. Now, in our service this morning, It's a World Life pays a return visit. Joe and Harry read scripture for us, Kath leads in prayer, and Steve Pearson opens God's word for us. Yes, I've got the Sunday off. And of course, Sandra, Tom and Ed lead us in sung worship. To them, good morning. Good morning. Oh, here we are this morning. It's late. It's really odd not recording in the dark. Here we are this morning at the Lucas household because they banned us from church. What do you mean? It must be you, Tom. Must be. Must be you. No. <laughs> the carpet's being fitted at church, so we're here in the Lucas household with Ed. Um to bring to to worship with you this morning. I forgot what I was doing even this morning. <laughs> it's not unusual. So we're going to start our worship by reading from Psalm 93. The Lord is king. He is clothed with majesty and strength. The earth is set firmly in place and cannot be moved. Your throne, O Lord, has been firm from the beginning and you existed before time began. The ocean depths raise their voice, O Lord. They raise their voice and roar. The Lord rules supreme in heaven, greater than the roar of the ocean, more powerful than the waves of the sea. So let's sing and worship this powerful God this morning. Let's sing, Lord, reign in me.
do a bit of potting here. These aren't looking quite so good. Still nothing growing in that one. Well, it's nice to see you. It's nice in the to see you. We're allowed in the garden now. Come in, have a seat. Oh, thank you. Are we two metres apart? Two, definitely two, two metres. Two, two uh, metres of length. Oh, sorry, I'm in a bit of a pickle here. I was a bit messy. Well, but I bought my flowers. Look at these, Bargo. aren't they? Beautiful. Wow. Um, I had to come and show you, Barbara. Look, I've adopted your headscarf and everything. Oh, my word. Do you like they them? are truly magnificent. They are fabulous. Aren't they? Shall I show you, Mark? Margo, this is all that came from mine. Oh, Barbara! I oh, well, planted seven, Margo. Seven? I'm not sure what I did wrong. Do you think I did something wrong? I, I don't suppose you did, Margo. Did you, Barbara? Did you feed them like you told me? Yes. Did you give them beautiful feet? You, they have beautiful feet. I'm Good. sure. I'm sure their roots are growing really well. I'm sure the they are. I'm, I'm sure, sure they, they are. are. Have you I've seen the others? I mean, yes. Well, that's Mrs. Hopkins Mrs. from the W. R. Have you seen this? Hers. Hers are like my salad leaves. They're I tell all, you, all, they are everywhere. Everywhere. Aren't they? everywhere. everywhere. She doesn't have flowers like mine. No. No. no, no and no, Sarah's. No. Have you seen Sarah's? Oh, yes. Oh. She's got. Oh. And jeans. Oh, jeans. Oh, she jeans. Oh. Oh. oh, and in the window. In the Yes, I know, I know. Liz, Liz is. Oh, 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 the lovely Miss Paisley. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Uh, and, 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 and Mrs. Lacey, I do believe. Mrs. She has. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, with the red. The red. With the red. The red. Oh. His, his are in um, black, black pots, oh. but, but his are look, look a bit like mine. Well, yes. But not not well, so good yes, there. Yes, so not like my beautiful. And some people's didn't grow at all, I believe. I know, I don't know why. They're not going to be into there in the flower show. No, this no, are, no, then. I don't think so, it's Barbara. It's strange, though, isn't it, Margot? How some plants? Well, we've got we've got sort of tall plants. Yes. Some grow really tall. Yes, very tall. Yes. Very tall. Some some do take a little bit longer to grow. See, I planted those do. at the same time. Oh, at the same time, did you? Yeah. Well, some and, of, yeah, yeah, so. and these, you see. Oh well, no! You see, these these aren't flowers. No, it's grass, Barbara. No, no, onions. No. Onions. Onions. So that's Onion. well, different mm. purpose, different plant. Yeah, different that's true. This. Well, this is my salad leaf. This so. mm, mm, but very I nice. There's a lesson to learn here, Margot. Is, is there, Barbara? Well, I think so. I think a bit in the same way. I'm going to put my gloves on. So my fingers are a bit yeah. cold, and this is a bit messy. But in the same way that some of our seeds have grown, and some of us have. Beautiful, beautiful flowers. flowers. Others of us are taking a little bit longer. It's the same like all of us, isn't it? Some yes. of us, some of us are tall, and some of us are, you know, take a little bit longer to grow. True, some of us true. Are, are very busy, very busy. Yes, that's true. Very yes, busy, yes, kind yes. of almost sort of running around yes. everywhere, doing lots and lots of things. That's right. They've got a purpose. Some grow into flowers. Yes, yes. These, well, I, I did go back and read the packet. They said they took fifty. Days to germinate. Fifty days. Oh, oh, day thirty. Goodness. You had to have a lot of patience. I for think those. a lot of yes, patience. Yes, Whereas yes. these were, you know, a couple of days, and there they were, oh, almost days. ready to eat. So, what are you saying? You're saying it's a little bit like us, then? Well, I think so, Margaret. Well, so some of us just shoot on yes. up and guess yes. Well, I guess uh, yes. yes. That's some not me, is it? Uh, Let's be honest. Some of us have to. Think about things a yes. little bit more. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. 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 Some of us like to do a lot of things. Yes, yeah, yes. Be these ones. Yes. Um, so, oh, some lots of nurture. Lots, lots, lots of, of nurture. Yes, lots yes. of love. Lots yes. of care. And some people are a little bit smelly, like onions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, yeah. Okay. I think that might be a Jerry and Tom over there. <laughs> that I think it might be all that nice over there. But you know, there's something in the Bible about that as well. One body, many parts. Yes. And the church is all, oh, um, no, one body, yeah, on arms, some people are the arms, some people are the legs. Right. We all work together. We all work together. That's right. Romans and Corinthians. Oh, bless them. Yes, yeah, so we can all be different. We can all be different, but there's, we still celebrate and we're still, we are still all beautiful flowers. We are all beautiful flowers, but in with, our own With lovely way. smelling feet. Oh, with lovely smelling yeah. feet. I've got my wellies on, I don't think I smell uh, no, I, I don't today. need to see them. Oh, well, I haven't offered you a cup of tea, Margot. That would be lovely. Oh. And patio heater, can we not have something oh. like that? Fire pit? Uh, well, yes, that would be your top, wouldn't it? Yes. yes. 
I'll yeah. get I'll get Tom. Tom, cup of tea. Come, we have come on, Tom. Pit. Come on, Pip. It's a bit cold, Tom. <laughs> going to use this time to pray together. Some words are going to come up alongside me. You're welcome to read those out loud wherever you are this morning if you'd like to. I'm also going to give opportunity uh, for you to have your own time with God in prayer as well and I will pause at several points uh, through the prayers uh, to let you have time to do that. So let's pray. Psalm 63 here I am in the place of worship, eyes open, drinking in your strength and glory. In your generous love, I am really living at last. My lips brim praises like fountains. I bless you every time I take a breath. My arms wave like banners of praise to you. Psalm 51, generous in love, God give grace, huge in mercy, wipe out my bad record, God give me a fresh start this week. Let's pause and I invite you to just in these few moments reflect on the last few days this last week. Ask God for forgiveness. God, give me a fresh start this week. Generous in love, huge in mercy. Psalm 42, a white-tailed deer drinks from the creek. I want to drink God, deep draughts of God. I fix my eyes on God, he puts a smile on my face. He's my God. Let's focus a time of prayer on people. People that we know personally, through our fellowship, through our community, through work people we've bumped into on the street. Let's lift them in our prayers now to God. Maybe speak their names out loud. Maybe speak them in your heart to God now. But ask for his love to surround them, his peace to be upon them. We think especially of Yvonne, Helen, of Judith and of Mary. When we think of our friends and our family. I invite you to pray prayers of comfort. Comfort to those we know need God's comfort at this time. In our fellowship we think particularly of Chris and her family who said goodbye to Chris's mum Beryl in this last week. But we think of all those who mourn, those who've had difficult days because of anniversaries of people dying. But Lord, we just ask you in this small time of, in this short time of, of quietness, to comfort them, surround them with your love. I invite you to pray for places, our community, Parklands community, maybe particular things going on in this country or places in this country that you want to lift to God in prayer or particular places overseas. Let's pray for places, places where we want to see God's kingdom built and God's kingdom flourish. And let's pray for situations, situations that seem beyond our control, but we know that our God, our God is in control of everything. 
Let's pray for those situations now. The pandemic itself, prayers of thanks for the vaccination rollout, prayers for the situation in Brazil and Myanmar. Lord, we lift those situations to you now. And we pray for people that we know that are serving in mission work overseas. But we also think of all people serving in mission work overseas and mission work in this country. We think particularly of Pete and Louise in Dhaka in Bangladesh, especially as that country now is in lockdown. We think of Judy Cook in Thailand and all the work that she's doing at Hope Home with her staff there for the children. And we think of Endry and Dushi in Albania at Drita Robotis. And in a final time of just quiet prayer, I just invite you to talk to God about anything on your heart this morning. Maybe prayers of thanks. Maybe prayers asking for comfort or love for a situation or a person. Let's just take this time to pray to God. And finally, I invite you to say with me, may God go with us this week. May his presence be among us. Whether it's our time to grow, our time to be nurtured, or our time to flower, our God is always happy to have us with him. He will calm us with love and delight over us in song. Amen. One Timothy one verse seventeen says, "All honour and glory to God for ever and ever. He is the eternal King, the unseen One who never dies. He alone is God." Let's sing glory and honour. <laughs>
Good morning and um, welcome to uh, February the 11th. Um, I was really hoping that uh, that we'd be uh, back in the church uh, by now when, well, Alan first asked me if uh, uh, if I bring something on a Sunday, uh, I thought middle of April will be absolutely fine. We'll be back in church by then. And um, sadly, uh, that's not the case. We're, we're, we're still on, on YouTube, although we did have, um, we were back in, or some of us were back in um, the church last Sunday, uh, which was uh, beyond wonderful to be, uh, to be back in there for, for Lynn and myself. It was the first time in, in over a year, but it was special and it was very special for it to be um, Easter Sunday. Um, and some of you were there um, with us, which, which are absolutely fabulous. Uh, and some were there on, on Good Friday. Um, but here we are back on, back on YouTube. Um, I've been tied to the chair because, as you know, I do like to move around a bit and uh, it's, it's one of the biggest challenges with, with Zoom and, and also I can't see you if you're nodding along with me, but hey-ho. Um, this, is, this has been a, an incredible journey for me uh, because um, for weeks and weeks after giving Alan the... Uh, the date that, that, that I would prepare something, I really struggled. I really struggled. I, and I, and I, it was getting to the point where I was saying to Lynn, I, I, I'm going to have to ring Alan and, and ask him for a bit of guidance because I have got absolutely nothing um, that, uh, that to, 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 to bring. Um, because Alan said, you know, we, we'll be in between... Um, subjects, so just do what you want, um, which is really difficult. And then uh, as, as our, our midweek group that we're doing the, the prayer course, um, Mark 2, which is about, um, is the Peter Gray course uh, about unanswered prayer, and I think other groups are doing it as well. And it's hugely challenging, um, and has been, and uh, as has has brought us uh, a little bit of consternation, um, lots of deliberation, um, but it has been a challenge. Um, and a few weeks ago, the passage that we, we, we came across um, this, this passage, um, and uh, principally verse, verse 12, when Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other, so his hands remained steady till sunset. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses, Aaron and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady until sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. And the Lord said to Moses, write this on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it, because I will completely blot out the name of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. And um, 
and it, it just it just spoke to me and and i i started looking at it as um uh thinking yeah you know i can i can see that uh that, that there might be something in this and and i was thinking well how can i talk about it for 20 25 minutes um and um and come last uh good friday when i uh, when i had uh, I, I was kind of putting it all together and I was thinking, crikey, I'm going to have to leave stuff out um, so it could go on for hours. Um, and so there's this things that, that we've pulled out, but that's the beauty of spending time uh, doing some, some studying is how you can look at things um, different one day to how you saw them the day before. Um, and of course, there's, there's Bible commentaries. You, you listen to what other people have said about, uh, about Moses' life. And certain things that people say plant a seed and then that develops. And it's really quite a staggering, staggering process. As I've said before, that, you know, primarily I've, what, 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 what I, I will bring out from this passage this morning uh, spoke to me. And so it applies to me first and foremost. I'm not here to preach. I'm just here to, to just tell you um, some of the things that, that have, 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 come to, uh, have come to my attention looking through this passage. And I hope that, that you get something out of it. And at the end, I'm not going to paraphrase and bring it all together because I think as we go through, just like in the last 12 months with this COVID pandemic, we've all needed different things at different times. That we, at times we've needed support, at times we've needed encouragement, at times we needed a little clip around the ear, and at times we just needed somebody to come alongside. And so wherever you're at this morning, I pray that something that is said will just, will just speak to you. Okay, so let's, let's, uh, let's have a look at this. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. So this is um, verse eight. Moses said to Joshua, choose some men, some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow, I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. And the first thing to note is that he says, I will go and stand on the hill. He didn't say a hill. He said the hill. And I've looked at loads and loads of translations, thanks uh, to Google. And everybody translate. I've not found a translation where it says anything other than the hill. And I believe that Joshua going in to fight knew exactly where Moses was going to be. And it was important for him to know exactly where Moses was going to be. Because Moses says to him, I will, I will go up the hill with my hands aloft with the staff of God in my hand. And that is such a picture of intercessory prayer. That while Joshua was going to fight, Moses was stood on the top of the, the hill, interceding for him. And there's, there's, there's a whole thing here, isn't there, about what we are called to do. Because Moses wasn't called to go and fight. Joshua wasn't called to stand at the top of the hill to hold Moses' hands aloft as they started to, to get tired. And Aaron wasn't called to be the intercessor or to fight. They all had their specific jobs to do. And when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about our our dear friends, um, Pete and Lou, um, out in Bangladesh, they were called, and I don't think anybody would question 
that they were called to go to Bangladesh. And I'm pleased that they were called to go to Bangladesh because it might have been me and I wouldn't have liked that. But that was their calling. That's what God had asked them to do, to go and be a witness in Bangladesh. My obligation, my responsibility as part of their sending church is to stand with them, not in Bangladesh, but back here. And to hold them up and to intercede before God for them. And I think that at times that must give them tremendous encouragement, knowing fully well the World Baptist Church stands with them in what they're going through. And we should. If we don't, we should. But he says, Moses says, I should go up the hill with the staff of God in my hand. And I, I just think that um, maybe it's a bit naughty, but, you know, Joshua listening to Moses, knowing Moses' humility, and he says, I should go up the hill. And Joshua says, well, thank you very much. And then Moses says, but I'll have the staff of God in my hand. And Joshua's thinking, crikey, now we know we're all right because the staff of God the staff that Moses carried was hugely symbolic and significant to the tribe of Israel because right from the get-go when Moses is stood in front of the burning bush God says put your staff down and he puts it down and he turns into a serpent lift it up and he lifts it up and it goes back to the staff the staff that Moses carried when they got to the Red Sea as they were fleeing captivity, he holds it aloft and, aloft and the waters part and so they walk through. Our reading this morning was partway through um, chapter 17. The beginning of chapter 17, Moses says to God, they're going to stone me. They've got no water. And God says, strike the rock and the water will will flow and whether they had seen with their own eyes they would have heard stories they knew that when Moses had his staff in his hand in context to something happening that was going to be miraculous that God was with them it was hugely important. And you don't need me to, to draw out from that, that when we go into difficulty, we need to be armed with the right, the right things. We need those significant and symbolic things that tell us that God is with us. And that could be verses that we've heard that we've memorized or it could be a creasy fix it could be anything but we need or we should have something that just reminds us god is with us because he absolutely is and you know we're thinking about this staff that Moses was was holding and all the great things that had happened. And I am absolutely convinced, knowing what a humble person Moses was, because time and time again, God asks him to do something and he says, I can't do it. And God says, no, you can't, but you can if I'm with you. And I think Moses knew only too well that it was God's power that was working through him and through the staff. It wasn't of his own ability. And I know that there are things that, that 
that I have done, that I know it's because God has been with me. And yet all the time, that gets whittled away. And I start making people believe that it was because of me. And I lose that acknowledgement to the master and creator of the universe working through me in something happening. That's just something, something to guard against. So verse 12. can't find it now uh when moses hands grew tired they took a stone and put it under him and he sat in it aaron and her held up his hands one on one side one on the other so his hands remained steady till sunset there's something here isn't there uh, there's look ask alan because he's a lot cleverer than me. There's there's some significance about a stone being put under Moses. And I guess that he talks about a firm foundation. But I want to I want to emphasize really the point that came out to me about Aaron and her standing alongside Moses. And the significance of of what Moses was doing was that when his hands were up, Joshua had the upper hand in the battle. And as his hands started to drop, so the Amalekites got the upper hand. And I think Aaron and her kind of got that. They latched onto that quite quickly. And so I, I, don't, I really don't think that uh, that that. Uh, Moses had to say to them, hang on a minute, I I'm getting a little bit tired. They were watching and they were waiting for that moment when they could step into the breach and they could hold his hands high. And as I said, they, 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 had, they had their own task to do. And the reason that the Malachites were defeated was because they all did their job. Nobody was more important. Nobody had the best job. They all had a job to do and they only could win if they did it well. And it doesn't matter whether you're called to be a leader. <coughs> it doesn't matter whether you're called to put the chairs out or to do the teas and coffees when we're allowed, or to count the money, or it's not important what job we do for, for God. It's important that we know what job we need to do. And it's important that we do it to the best of our ability. And sadly, many of us, it's taken us years and years and years even to acknowledge that we need to do a job of work. And that's sad. But knowing that we are called to do something for God is hugely important. And just as important is doing it to the best of our ability. And in 1 Corinthians 12, 12, I think it is, where Paul is saying about the different body parts and you can't do this without your left hand, you know, uh, can't do anything without the right hand. And, you know, the eye doesn't say I'm more important. And he goes through it stage by stage. And so it is with, with us as a church that nobody, nobody is, is more important. We just have different responsibilities, but we have to. We have to pull together. And Moses goes up the mountain with Aaron and her as his support. Contrast this to what have we been looking at for the last couple of weeks leading up 
through and uh, leading up to and through Holy Week. And one of the one of the key things that has come out to me this Easter is the loneliness of the journey that Jesus took. Because in Matthew 26, we read about Jesus going to the Garden of Gethsemane. And he takes some disciples with him. And he says, watch and pray. And he goes a little further and he prays to God. And he comes back and and they're asleep. And he says, could you not watch with me one hour? And do you know what the saddest part about that reading is, is the second time that Jesus goes back to them and they're asleep and he leaves them be. There's that acknowledgement that they're not there for him. They are not there to serve a purpose. Just leave them be. And a short while after, one of his disciples betrays him. And a while later, Peter denies him. Of that journey from Gethsemane to the cross was very, very lonely. And Moses, when he's going up, going up to the hill to pray and to protect Joshua and the army, he has people around him to support him. It wasn't lonely. He had everything he, he needed. His relationship with Aaron was, was really strong. But he had two of them. There were two people to pick up the slack. And would it be, you know, I think about what our church has gone through over the last, um, it's over 12 months now. And, you know, because th there's, there's a bit here, isn't there, where Moses has one job to do. Just one. He's not juggling them. Is he juggling balls and, and spinning plates? Uh, he has one job to do and he gets tired doing that job. And do you know what? It's okay. It's okay to get tired. And Aaron and her don't stand there and go, whoa, what's going on? We've put all our eggs in one basket. This bloke, he, he, he's, he's not really a, a good leader, is he? Or we think it. I could have done a better job than that. No, they didn't. There was no judging. Some friends of ours started a church in um, Minnesota um, or Minneapolis, either one, and um, and they had some church, some shirts uh, printed that said "No judging, just Jesus." And I really like that. Um, and that's where the, Aaron and her were wearing those T-shirts. That they didn't judge Moses on what he was doing, on the fact he was getting tired. They stepped into the breach and they supported him. And would it be that the, the leadership team should go through this last 12, 14 months, whatever it's been and whatever it will turn out to be, not knowing that the church stood with them? And it's down to, down to me and I would urge everyone to make it known to, to, to the wonderful people that have 
spend so much time trying to make people safe and make the right decisions because actually it's 10 times worse than it is for me in in my business because a church is somewhere where you invite people in where you're there to to encourage and support and yet for the last x amount of months we've had to say stay away and that must be hugely difficult. And it's important that our leaders know that we stand alongside them and we support them. And leaders get tired. But it doesn't matter because there's, there's people around who will say, I'll do that. I'll do that. It's a song, isn't it? Lean on me. And all that the leadership team know, that they have a whole church to lean on. Um, I, I think that's enough for, for one day. Um, if you've got this far, thank you very much. Um, hopefully, if I ever get invited again, uh, it will be back in the, in the building. But I hope there's something that has spoken to you this morning. God bless you. Have a really good week.
Lord, thank you that you are all those things, the defender of the weak, that you comfort us and you lift us up on wings like eagles. As we go into this week ahead, Lord, let's trust in you for all these things. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, rest upon us and remain with us now and always. Amen.